We start with Mr. Lloyd. Six minutes, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And um, uh, Mr. Langua, you um, retweeted a New York Times article recently that the title being A Smarter Way to Reduce Gun Deaths. And I, I took a read through the article, and the thesis seemed to be that uh, governments need to focus less on the firearms themselves and more on the people using them, and that uh, liberals, in the case in the United States, um, are focused too much on on the uh, on on banning certain kinds of firearms and less on a quote panoply of other interventions that could be more effective at reducing uh, gun violence. Do you agree broadly with the thesis of of this essay? Thank you for <clears throat> sorry. Thank you for the question. Um, yes, uh, the main thing is. Of course, prevention is more efficient. That being said, it depends on the objective of the government. And if the objective is to reduce mass shootings, perhaps terrorism too, um, uh, I would say what the government for the moment calls military style assault rifle uh, are the preferred uh, weapons used by uh, mass shooters. If you prefer self-loading weapons, semi-automatic pistols or uh, rifles are the most uh, used um, weapon to do mass shootings. So if the governments want to reduce mass shootings, that's a way to reduce the accessibility of those weapons. That being said, I think uh, you, um, you are right. We have to, uh, as a society, uh, address the causes of violence in Canadian cities and, um, well, issues of mental health and those issues, I agree. But again, depends on the objective of the government. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Or thank you uh, uh, to the witness for that. Um, another quote from the article said, and, and I, this is for the committee, this is in the American context, uh, but, quote, what we call assault rifles probably account for fewer than 7% of guns used in crimes and only a small share of suicides, and they have re proved repeatedly difficult to define, end quote. Um, Mr. Langua, you might be aware, but uh, recent Statistics Canada report that came out just in December a couple of months ago said that in terms of violent crimes in Canada, a rifle or a shotgun, a long gun, was only present at 0.47% of all violent crimes. Would you agree that uh, long guns in, in the Canadian context are far less involved in violent crimes than the American con uh, context and that they, they form such a small minority of, of crimes committed in Canada that they're present at? Thank you again for the question. I think you are right. Long guns are not uh, usually, usually used to, do, to commit crime. Um, but again, it depends what the government wants to do first. And also what I propose here is to uh, classify weapons differently. So you use the, the expression assault weapon. Uh, well, it's very difficult to define an assault weapon. Um, I think the law should um, define, categorize the weapons or firearms by their the way they are handled and the way or manipulated if you want and um the way they shoot and semi-automatic weapons self-loading weapons with uh, um detachable magazines are way more dangerous thank you for that shootings um if if a government were trying to uh you know create as much political blowback as possible um would would that government go after hunting guns and long guns? Like, is that, is that something that you would agree would create the, the most political division in a country like Canada? I, I won't have, well, I think you're the politicians. Uh, I'm not. Uh, so I'm giving you my opinion on how we should categorize the weapons. Of course, I think a lot of people will not be happy. That being said, with the current law and categorization, a lot of people are not happy. So it's up to you to uh, to decide. I think politics is the art of the choice. 
And the choice to go after long guns that could include hunting guns, do you think that this choice is, is more of a political choice or, or would this actually have a significant impact on public safety? It would have a significant impact on public security, even if the, the weapon we are talking about are not used very often in crime. You know, mass shootings are lower frequency, but high intensity events. So that's the main problem with those weapons. You're an expert in American gun culture. You know, we've had some witnesses that say, if we don't pass these amendments, we're going to become just like the United States. I mean, we know at this committee, and Canadians know, gun owners know, Canada has far more robust and restrictive firearms policy than the United States. Wouldn't you agree with that? You're absolutely right. <laughs> The, the law is way stronger here than in the United States. So would you agree that there's really no risk of us becoming similar to the United States um, just because the amendments at this committee didn't pass? Um, I think you're, prob you're probably right. Uh, that being said, um, the industry is pushing for new uh, models of weapons to be sold here and everywhere in the world, and those weapons may be uh, quite dangerous. Well, we know what happens south of the border, and a lot of those weapons are going even south, even in Mexico and South America. So we see what is happening over there. So let's not um, permit the the industry to uh, distribute this, uh, you know, uh, those uh, semi-automatics uh, long rifle. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd.